Next in line is one of IIT Jain's most senior faculty, Professor N. Ramakrishnan. Please join me in inviting him on stage to share a drop from his huge ocean of experience. Good evening all of you. First and foremost, the best of luck for the batch who are passing out this year. Udan 17. Fly high. Keep the name of the IIT Gandhinagar very, very high. I have been told I have got 10 minutes. So precisely from now at 10 minutes, if you have not closed, please start clapping. <laughs> so that I know it's time and for me to leave from here. My thoughts I will put into two categories. Like a successful commercial Hindi movie, the first part is not connected with the second half. <laughs> first part is regarding very a little bit of seriousness. Benefits and enjoyment of engineering and technology were, I am too uh, uncertain what are the answers for this. This benefits, if I look at, he is a person living on the 100th floor, AC, with taller buildings all over, with not able to see sunrise, sunset, moonlight, or any of the things of nature. Can we say that he is enjoying the benefits of the high technology that we have developed? I don't know. If a person is moving in a driverless car in a traffic jam, with all amenities, comforts, to be connected to anywhere, anybody in the world, is he enjoying the life? of the development of technology. I am not sure. Engineering started with two branches, civil and military. So the kings and emperors will use the military to capture and get forcefully the wealth of other countries. And then to create a name permanently, they will build castles and pyramids and all big things, temples, whatever they think will keep their memories forever on the earth. Then started other departments slowly as the technology developed to electrical, mechanical, computer, so many other things. Today we are at a stage, I don't know whether the concept of people passing in a particular discipline really means that that person is in a particular discipline. I have a feeling that we have already a little bit changed over with uh, some flexibility, but has the time come that we say all are engineering or other science graduates, humanities graduates, with only skills as the kind of thing which bind them together. Graduates in automobile, graduates in aircrafts, graduate in anything else. So that all the skills required are brought in because that is how things, I think, they are moving. I am not sure about that. <coughs> with the robots with artificial intelligence, it is estimated that 45% of jobs in USA will vanish when, by uh, 2030 or so they say. Assuming that the automation all fronts will increase, a large part of population may not have to work. What will be the objective of a newborn human baby? What will people do if they have all the wealth and prosperity but no work? I don't know because we all live based on the concept of an objective in life and then trying to pursue it. What will be that objective if all these are done by robots? I do not know. I am also confused. If there is a good mix of intelligent human beings and robots, what will be the society like? Worth thinking, particularly our humanities and cognitive science people. And if more and more work is done by automation, robots and all that, so that thousands and lakhs of jobs are lost, the government will lose a lot of income tax. So at that time, do we, does the government will have to start a, a new tax called robot tax in putter of income tax? Or how do we manage the economics in those conditions? I do not know. So a lot of things that are happening, technologically very challenging because as told by one psychologist, people will go on developing technology because it is exciting for the brain, not because they think it is necessary for the human being. 
So where do we stop between the excitement of doing something and where something is useful, beneficial and nice for the human things. Now coming to the second part of it which is in a lighter way in laughing at myself. If anybody feels that unknowingly that person also appeared to be in the thing, please forgive. Only I am trying to laugh at myself. That is called my dilemma in manufacturing. <coughs> There was a time when manufacturing was sought after and was pretty prestigious. The current batch may not know it. They may not believe what I am telling. There was a time, 20, 30 years back. Now, if I use wildlife terminology, wildlife terminology, manufacturing is an endangered species moving towards extinction. That is what I find happening. In a core course of manufacturing where all branches join, the first two days there were 160 students of 185 or more. Then I declared my usual declaration that I will not be taking attendance. The next day attendance dropped to 20 to 25. And it continued. So I called the class representative and asked, what is the matter? Only if I take attendance, people will attend classes. Uh, he wanted to protect his class. No, not like that, sir. Every class, the number is not much different, you know. But then, why these 25 people come then? The other way, he asked. Sir, our breakfast is very good. It gets over at 9.30 and your class is at 10. So it's a nice thing after breakfast to walk to the block, sit in the class and have a nice nap, and then go back. So I was so satisfied now that I knew that whatever I tell in the class will not matter, you know, because they, it has to be done over. However, can it make it more attractive? So I asked one of my colleagues who is a professor of music and very you know, renowned musician, that do you think that without taking attendance, you can co uh, no, it attract students to attend classes? You can try the traditional Bharati style. What is that? You know, in our days, we never had lectures. Our gurus in Gurukul, everything used to be only sung in the form of poems. If you see, even Krishna was telling to Arjuna, the, all the thing is not a speech. He had used poems to go on explaining. So why don't you try to teach manufacturing in, as a poem? So I tried to write down a poem on sand casting <laughs> and then caught hold of some students and told that uh, give your feedback before I do it in the class. They sat with such a glum face and whenever I look at them they will smile. As soon as I look away then the face is back to glum. So what do you have to say? It is alright sir. What? I myself know that this is not alright. No, sir, whatever you do is all right for us. There is no problem. <coughs> that is what they told. Well, I still on search of a way in which without taking attendance, manufacturing perhaps may be able to get back to a little bit of its past glory so that currently India want to be big in make in India. We want to be a world hub for manufacturing. And always in an IIT out of 100, at least 4 to 5 students who are really used to be interested in manufacturing. I hope and plead with them that can we put an attempt that from around 132 out of 172 countries, we can move towards the first few. Since there is uh, there has not been clapping, I think that I could manage within 10 minutes. Thank you all very much. This is our only a few thoughts. Thanks. <laughs>